Talus Magic Talk Show brought to you by Talus Master G C Food and Team Yet Dragon Talusum. Puriang Tenjon. Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. This is your G C Food right here. Today we are going to talk about a very different kind of topic in this episode. Um, so we're going to introduce the Zen uh, topic in our lineage. So this is the same word as the Zen you see from Buddhism, but it's totally not the same thing. Okay, so this is, um, well, I believe this is more like our lineage exclusive stuff. So I don't think you can see it in any other uh, sect uh, at least if they do say they have something like that, it's not the same thing that we do. So it's something exclusive, right? And if you want to know more about it, you can uh, comment below and ask questions and so on. And we also have an ebook on this uh, with a scripture and so on on Amazon. If you find the uh, find our ebook, you search for GC Food and type Zen. Z E N at the back, you should see uh, our scripture, Golden Power Zen, something. Uh, yeah, that one. Okay. So, anyway, what is Zen? So, this is to answer my disciples who are very interested in this because it seems like hmm, it's like they have it in Buddhism. So, what is it in our lineage and religion? Okay. So, the word is sim in Cantonese and in Samanese is siam. Okay, siam. So, what is this thing for actually? Uh, we should start with like the purpose of why we have to learn and cultivate the Zen thing. Okay, so the purpose is to deal with your heart devils, to clean up your heart. What happens if your heart is not clean up? Well, then you have a lot of problems because these hard devils will create blockages for you that will fail, that will make you fail your talus journey. So eventually, if you don't deal with these things, then you will not be able to overcome those hurdles. So things will happen and it will lead to the point where you will be giving up, you will be withdrawing, and you will be like, Ah, oh, you know, just whatever, and then you just want to like give up everything. So that happened, okay? That happened to some disciples before, and it is not easy to go through the real Zen cultivation because even I have told them the same thing that I will talk about today. They can also be falling into their own traps. So I gotta be like warning you guys: you cannot expect to go through this yourself. There's a need for a master to closely monitor, teach, and guide you. But this is just an introduction so for you guys to know what it is. Okay, let's go. So, Zen doesn't always need to be like sit there and practice. You, it can like change to other form, but the same, same concept is there. Okay, you have to deal with that heart devil. And what is the heart devil? <clears throat> well, the heart devil is like when you um, when you are trying to make decision, when you're thinking, there's always the thing that jams in and tells you some opinion or try to give you uh, some thoughts, some ideas, and steer the wheel to that direction and lead you to something not good. And sometimes people don't realize that it is like that voice. So you'll even think that it is yourself and you'll be totally convinced and you'll go by it and think that, hey, yeah, that's right, you know, and you'll go like that. So how do we deal with the Zen thing? How do we fight that hard devil? Okay, rule number one, okay, very important. Rule number one is do not go by feeling, but go with the rules that have been set. So what are the rules? Well, very simple. You got to be um, always like keeping this in mind. You are a talus, right? You're a talus of our sect and you have this identity. This is you. 
your goal is to you know, uh, go to the Dilotin, which is the Talus Heaven, when you die. Okay, so you have like all these um, uh, main things like laid out, and these cannot change. Okay, you pick your stands. You know, a lot of people are like, they don't stand on one side. So they try to like, you know, decide if I should stand on this or that side. And when you're like that, you're going to lose the battle. Okay, you got to be very firm and strong on where you're standing. I'm standing here as a Talus. Okay, okay, like this sect, Talus, I have my goal. I'm not going to give up. Whatever thing that shows up is evil. That like try to like drive me away from this direction is evil. Okay, so you see you have a master, okay, like which is me. So if anything that puts you and your master in a bad relationship is also bad. You should be standing on that uh, side to defend and uh, keep the relationship, right? Okay, good. You know, kids are sometimes better than adults on this kind of thing. Have you ever seen how kids react when people like talk bad about their parents? To them, the parents is always the right one. If they're like the best one in the world, right? The smartest one. They know everything. Everyone else is going to be like, you know, under their parents' level. That's how kids are. And that's exactly what happened when you're very loyal to your parents, which is a good thing. And a lot of adults, shame on you. You can't even do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. It is like that, right? The, whatever people say about your parents, or even if your parents actually made a mistake, they will still stand on their parents' side and say, no, they did it on purpose. No, they did it because, you know, like you keep making excuses. I don't care what, what my parents did. You, know, you are not supposed to do this to them, you know, like that. I saw a video online, um, a like very, very baby kid i don't know how old he is but he can like just stand so <laughs> you can imagine like very toddler and that kid was um defending his grandmother and his grandmother was the wrong one um i forgot what she's doing maybe like taking something from the street or something and then there were people trying to stop her from doing that and, you know, this kid is like, my grandma is right, right? No one else can say she's wrong. So he stood up and fought the adults. And then he grabbed the stuff, like that stick from the adult, and like try, try to fight people off just to save his grandmother. And everyone don't even want to go near because they don't want to hurt the kid, right? <laughs> that kid was so cute. But you see... This is exactly how you should be as a Dallas. Very strong-minded. I stand here. Whatever people say, you know, they are the asshole. I am the only one uh, that is right. You know, it's like that, right? Whatever you say, you know, my Tao is the best. My Tao is always right, like that. Um, I have to give credit to those diehard Muslim, Christian, and even some Tibetan, Tao, uh, Tibetan Buddhists. Buddhist. I saw a lot of like great examples from other paths, like other people. Uh, for example, you see the Tibetan Buddhists. I mean, they are kind of extreme, but they can like, you know, they can fight for their religion to the point that they'll pour gasoline over themselves and light themselves on fire. Can you do that? Well, seriously, it's not that easy, right? <laughs> Don't ask me the same question. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> so yeah, and I, I have grown up with like some Catholics and Christian around me and I saw how like people are like, you know, you give them some proof about their Bible is like wrong or, you know, this is not real and things like that. And they will fight you back until, you know, the end of the world. It's like really crazy, you know, they don't care what the fact is, what you are not going to win by saying they are fake, you know, like that. They don't care. 
That's exactly what you as a Taoist should be like. Seriously, look at those people. And the Muslim are even more aggressive than the Christian. I mean, like most of them, right? You see them like go on the street and parade and riot and, you know, fight the people, burn the cars, you know, just because they're standing up for their religion. And I have to say, this is a demonstration of a strong faith in the heart. This is what you guys, you know, like my disciples, you guys should learn from. I'm not saying that you should be a Muslim. I'm saying you should be as faithful as them toward what you are uh, belonging to. Seriously. And this is exactly what the Zen cultivation needs. So if you cannot stand strong on where you are, like what you belong to, you will fail and die uh, because, I mean, like not really die, but you will lose to all those hard devils that is attacking you. So, while we are doing our Zen cultivation, the first thing is having this mindset right. Second thing is the body and everything. You need to keep the alignment. Because to start off with, you will start by sitting uh, to cultivate the thing, right? So, you, you have to sit down, but make sure that you're not like hunching your back and you're not like crooked, right? You're not moving left and right, you know, wobbling and turning around. Stop yourself and keep yourself still, centered, balanced. Everything is like very aligned because you know what? When your body is not aligned, your energy will also turn into that, like more inclined toward that. And it will like try to make the thought very crooked, you know? So if you don't want those kind of um, weird thoughts, distraction, bad energies, you know, you need to avoid by uh, fixing up your posture. And I have seen some disciples before who are doing this sitting thing. And like within a few minutes, they get crooked. They get like all oh, hunched back and then they lean and, you know, oh, I feel pain, you know, like that. So, yeah, it's not easy, right? You've got to be self-aware and keep fixing your posture. Once you have got that down, what do you do? Um, well, besides like... Doing your heart spell and getting the empowerment first, right? And then you got to bring up the topic to ask yourself the question. And then some answers will pop up. These answers are nothing but your own heart popping up those answers to answer you. And by then, a lot of heart devils will come up. I know a lot of people think that, you know, if you ask yourself a question and there's a voice coming up, it should be the God. And it, well, it's not. It's yourself. OK, that's your own heart talking and your own heart will talk randomly sometimes with the devils, with the evil crap, with the negative energy. And you will hear things that bothers you the most. OK, and yeah, you will have those problems. So when you start raising up the question, your heart will come back with something negative. And your job is to fight it. Like you're a lawyer, you know, lawyer, you got to pick a stand, right? You can't like, oh, I, I just like defend whatever I think is right. You don't do that. A lawyer is like, you got hired by this side, you're going to fight for that side, right? Same thing. You are a disciple, you are a Taoist, you fight for your Tao, you fight for your master. So, you see what the voice is like actually saying it's going to drive you away from that, right? So you will fight it with any kind of method. You have to answer that voice and fight it back. So, yeah, you know, um, for example, right? The voice is like, oh, your master is only there for your money. Okay. And then what are you going to do? You, you make sure that you're focused answering that question, right? Your master is always only there for your money. First thing is no. No is a reject, right? You got to say no. My master is not always there for my money. You answer like that, directly bounce it back. And then you go back with something to support yourself or to fight back. Okay, no, my master is not always there for money. And then you add, he also gave us a lot of teachings for da 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 da. And then you wait a bit and the voice come back. Oh, well, his teaching is just like that. And he's just leading you to pay more. Okay. And then you go back. No, he's not leading us to pay more. 
because every time he teaches something, I can apply it right away on my daily life, and it's really useful. And he never asks for more money from that. And then the heart devil will come back, and you know, back and forth like that. So you will keep debating and debating and debating, and it is exhausting because you're like playing a mental game uh, with yourself, with your own energy. Right? It's like you're going through a lawsuit. <laughs> it is exhausting. And you know what? Sometimes that thing is tricky. That thing will drive you away and loop. You know, like you answer them something, they're not going to like directly come back at you. They're going to go like, oh, I cannot hit here. So I'm going to try another point. When this happens, you have to tell that voice, don't hide around. Don't go around the circle. Answer me first. I just talk about this. Why are you talking about that? Answer this first. You bring them back into the focus and make them face the problem, right? And once they decided, like, once the hard devil surrender, the voice will go quiet and silent and it will not come back. And then, you know, that hard devil died, right? That's when you achieve that win of that round. So it's really hard sometimes, right? Because, like, it can go back and forth a lot and uh, you're like, oh, oh, it's still not done, you know, like that, right? So it is hard. But you can always have this option. You can tell it, I have to go to the washroom right now. I'll come back, you know, later in the day, something like that. And you can also like set appointment, right? I'll come back tonight at eight, you know, something like that. And once you do that, it's like, you're not losing, right? I'm not hiding away. I'm just like, I need time to do other things. I have no time for you right now. I gotta go. You know, you can do that. And once you do that, that, that voice will like, okay, whatever, right? And then it will just drag. And then by then you go back again and you fight again, right? It's like a constant battle, nonstop battle. And once you have killed that hard devil and it cannot come back anymore, right? Later on, you try again. New things come up, new topic, you know, new topic comes up. And what are you doing with this kind of battle inside yourself is eventually it will clear up a lot of those obstruct obstructive forces right and well this is good because you won't be bothered by those evil thoughts anymore so you are going to be much happier stress-free because these things are not bothering you anymore these things in your mind are going to like disturb you and it's going to really take away a lot of energy uh from your like potentials you know uh, what you can do with those time for example like i have one hour right now i can do so much but because of these thoughts you know i have like 20 percent is being bothered by these things i cannot fully enjoy my time and eventually it's going to even disturb the result because you know i i first of all i want to do this but and then because of those thoughts i didn't put as much effort because i thought you know maybe there's a potential of me wasting my time anyway and then eventually you know what you're doing is like you're wasting your time you don't want these hard devils around right and hard devils are crazy stuff hard devils can also contaminate yeah if your energy goes into someone else it can contaminate that person if they don't clean it up and you are going to hurt other people and create harm in other people's lives as well. So you don't want that to happen, right? Mm. Well, yeah, Zen is not easy. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of things to learn about, like, you know, little tricks and, and techniques, you know, how to fight. And it's not easy. But the point is, you, you kind of get it now, right? Heart devils, you know, it's not good for you and it's going to eventually get you withdraw or quit from cultivating uh, the Tao and eventually you're going to lose everything. So you don't want that to happen, then the Zen is one way to deal with these hurdles. Okay, so my timer is up and I know there's a lot more to talk about, but well, we don't have time today. So we'll see you in another episode. And if you have any comments or things you want to ask, feel free to comment in the comment section and I'll answer you. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.